Hello everyone and welcome to Isaac News Today, where we are here to answer your questions and to work on solving the mystery that is Earth. So with that, we're going to hop right into our newsroom for the day because we have a special announcement from everythingreptiles.com, where it is, in fact, there are 3,686 species of snakes, and snakes can slither up to 12 miles per hour, which I just found fascinating. Hi, Mari. Thank you. Yes, please comment hashtag live so I can know who's here because we'll be doing a drawing near the end of our segment for our first giveaway, and we'll get into that later. But for our second fun fact or there, over 1.1 million people own pet snakes. So, Andrew, my brother, if you're watching this, owning a snake doesn't make you unique. You do. Your personality does. And... Because so many people have asked, my dad has in fact touched a snake before, my brother's pet, Ball Python. And so right here, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Lorraine, for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, Anina. And so for those of you who are watching, you're going to get a special treat where it is going to be my dad. Andrew, you don't comment. Hashtag replay during the life. Very clever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here is what I have. It is my dad touching a snake for the first time with his eyes closed because that's what he wanted to do. Okay. okay. We just let you pet. Dad's and home just getting to. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's... okay. Okay. Just, just pet it somewhere. I want to make sure. Doing also, doing can y'all tell me if you? Doing it quite yet. So we've got. Oh my gosh! What? <laughs> Just to double check, could everyone hear that? That's my first time figuring out how to splice in video footage. So if that didn't work, please let me know because a lot of the humor is hearing my dad scream. So if you didn't hear that, please let me know. But as we are figuring that out right now, we are going to transition to our movie review of the week. And so I'm going to transfer over to... Okay, good. You guys could hear it. Wonderful. Thank you. Andrew, I miss my snake. I bet you do. But you have something better now. It's called a live baby and a wife. So that was are much more pleasant than a snake. So, Andrew, I called him bananas. No, you didn't. You called him like Steve or something. No, okay, you probably did. All right. Until then, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Life Sensei's father, Life Sensei's dad, whatever y'all want to call him, and we shall pass it over LSD time. Here we go. Hello, Lil. Life Sensei, thank you for doing uh, allowing me on your show. We had to change from LSD to LSF because of a, uh, let's just say, a little visit from the police. The what? Okay, well, there was, it was a suggestion that we don't do that. So, welcome. The movie we're reviewing tonight is The Croods 2, A New Age. It was released in 25 November... 2020. It had a budget of 65 million and worldwide it grossed 191 million dollars. It had the original cast with Ryan Reynolds, Nicolas Cage, Emma Stone, and it added some notable names such as Peter Dinkle from the Game of Thrones and Elf franchise. The background of it, with uh, while with the searching for a safer habitat, the crews come upon a walled paradise that fits all of their safety and security and food needs but unfortunately someone's already been there and they have to deal with the new characters called the bettermans who are just about two or three levels above the crudes on the evolutionary ladder as tensions between the two families merge a new threat uh, happens and it forces both families to work together and shows the spirit of cooperation and even though we're different we can still work together for the benefit of our families. The conclusion, uh, while not even close to as good as the first Crudes because I watched the first Crudes with my wife just a day or so ago, it was still a fantastic out uh, second movie and I would give it a three and a half out of five caves. So until next time, this is Life Sensei's father saying, if it's fit to review, I'll review it. Back to you, Life Sensei. Thank you very much. 
<clears throat> All right, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. Welcome to the Dojo Grasshoppers. We'll get right into your questions now. So our first question of the day, you'll notice I'm trying something new tonight where you guys can see me and I'm going to show what the question is as we go there. So as we go, really quick, last check. Do, do, do. There we go. All right, so our first question of the day comes from... Do, do, do. Where did it go? Sorry. <laughs> Whoop. There we go. It comes from materialistic. What is the most important object in your life and why? This is a great question. Thank you so much for asking, materialistic. The most important object in my life, I, I have to disqualify my Bible right away because that's my you know, first answer because the Bible is arguably the, the greatest in uh, wisdom and knowledge. But aside from that, I guess, what would it be? You know, I, 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 gosh, this comes out of left field. I don't know, my, my mugs? I don't know, don't, no, one, one thing. I don't know. Yeah, I guess my, I will just go with my Bible because that is what's most important to me right now. Now, if there was a fire, I have a digital Bible, so the odds of me getting that one, you know, it's just one I bought at a store, so no real significant value or sentimental other than it's a Bible. So that's what I would say. Thank you for asking. Moving on, our next question comes from, man, that slows it down. Okay, comes, there we go, from Dr. Choo Choo. As a dentist, I often hound my patients to floss and brush their teeth. Brushing is legit helpful, but our whole industry has been bought out by big floss, so we push floss on people just to make a quick buck. JK, Floss costs like a quarter. Floss your teeth, people. Anyway, do you drink much soda? That's bad for your teeth and pretty much the rest of your body, too. Whoa. I do drink soda. Not as often as some people do, like my dad, who drinks it like every day. But we're working on it. Uh, flossing is very important, too. Gotta make sure you're flossing. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your question. <laughs> I think, though, I, I think... Uh... Diet soda has got to be better for you. It's diet, isn't it? No way. I, I would disagree completely. <laughs> All right. Next up, our next question comes from Big Bertha, who is asking, what is your favorite show with giants as main storylines? I can take a guess as to who used this under their code name, but uh, I think I would go with Attack on Titan. That's just a great storyline about giant people, but... Uh, that's not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that. Uh, other than that, I think Jack and the Beanstalk is a good one as well. Uh, other ones about giants. Um, Mickey and the Beanstalk. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Mickey and the Beanstalk, I agree. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there's not a whole lot about... Uh, well, you know, one with giants, uh, the Princess Bride. Oh, yeah, that does have a giant in it. I'd agree with that. Princess Bride all the way. All right, next up, from Sup from Super Troop. This one is for LSD. What is the best and worst thing about being in the military? Hmm. Well, first, make sure you uh, please hashtag live or hashtag replay mm -hmm. so you get your name thrown in <coughs> oh, to the, for the drawing. Mm -hmm. And like and share this video so we can continue to share the light in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hands down, the top two best things. First is being able to serve the greatest country in the history of the world and <laughs> also uh, having a a constant steady income and being able to provide for my family and then the worst I would have to say I, I don't consider it the worst is the wrong word uh, but Partly taking orders from people that if I was in the real world, I'd be running them. But <laughs> uh, but mostly, uh, you might expect me to say deployments, but deployments are not really that bad. True. Being separated when your children are little is rough, and you have to depend upon your spouse yep. a lot, uh, or, or maybe a grandma or grandpa, mm -hmm. however that is. So... To all my veterans out there, I'd like to thank you for your service, and I'd like to thank whoever asked me this question. Mm -hmm. But 
yeah, it's Perfect. that's all I really have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Next up. Oh wait, I might have missed some comments. I did. We want to see, yes, Floss, yes, Horner dudes, I see that. Thank you, Charlene, and thank you, Sierra and Andrew, for being here. All right, next up, our next question comes from Concerned Citizen, who asks, when are we going to see that beautiful mother of yours? We don't mind your father, but your mom has much knowledge to share, and she's super pretty. Thanks for the show. I think that's a great question. It is, it is a very great question. But just Accurate. so you guys are aware, I'm actually working on a show with my mom right now where it's uh, parental problems and parental tips, where my mom is going to reveal the secrets of how she raised such amazing children like me and my brother, where I don't have any conceit at all. But no, actually, I have all the conceit in the family, my mom says. Isn't that right, Mom? Yeah, you got it all. Yeah, I got all the conceit. So <laughs> our next question comes from oh yeah so if you guys are having any questions about parenting any questions that you have revolving around i don't know amazing dishes laundry anything well what else uh teaching because my mom was an elementary school teacher who was one of the biggest reasons that i'm so smart today uh when when is this happening this will be happening next month which, so September sometime? Yes, September. Uh, the, our first broadcast in September, we should be adding that to our roster. So if there's anything you guys have, please probably let us know. Maybe look for maybe towards the second. I'm getting kind of mixed vibes over here that uh, probably <laughs> won't be the first one. <laughs> we'll but see. I agree. Whoever wrote that question is obviously intelligent and has great taste. I, I bet it was you. But I would agree. All right. Next up, from Forged in America, they are asking, what is the best weapon you would have for yourself if you had to have a weapon on you at all time? Thanks for the update. Best weapon? I, I mean, guns are the most practical, but I don't like those. I'm not anti-gunner. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. Sorry. Don't know what came over me. Talk. Someone's talking about me, I'm mm. sure. All right. But basically, uh, swords. Swords are what I love the most, and that's what I would love to sleep with. Ooh, bow and arrow, Sarah. Great, great question. Andrew, I have tons of laundry questions, but never knew where I should go to answer them. Looking forward to it. Excuse me. I'll take over. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, I, I bet you would take over. You got a lot of good answers to these. All right. Our next question do, 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 comes from... Yummy, yummy. What is your favorite type of salad? For example, lettuce or chicken or tuna? What about dressings? I imagine it's ranch, but that's not a dressing. It's a dip. It's a yummy Ooh. dip, but a dip. Well, anyway, it's time for me to take my pills. Have a good night. <laughs> who? Who? <laughs> oh, thank you, Kimberly. Yes, God bless. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, favorite type of salad is my is my homemade snicker salad where it's cool whip apples and chopped up snickers and so we just put that together mari i agree with you ranch is definitely a dressing yes uh, i would not call it a dip it can be a dip but it's called ranch dressing i believe if we look back though in time we probably could see where it started out as a dip yeah, I could. I mean, maybe. No, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I think whoever wrote it is still pretty smart. Probably. I, I, I bet they're pretty smart. Okay. Next up, we have whoop, from Chess Player. Two people are playing chess. One has the power to read minds and one has the power to tell the future. Which one will win the game as seen on Instagram this week? Great question. This is a question that I posted to my Instagram story, so I know someone's following me. But... Oh, gosh, this is tough. Before we get to that, though, back to the ranch thing. Sarah says sweet kale salad with grilled chicken. The salad has a poppy seed dressing that is amazing. That does sound great. Andrew, yo, pancreas is working overtime for that one. It is. My pancreas is one of the strongest pancreases in the world, I imagined. All right. So if two people are playing chess and one can read minds, yet one can see the future, who will win? I would say the one who can read minds. Because just because they can see the future doesn't mean they can change it. So if they can see how the game is going to end, the person reading their mind can read the mind of the future, can see what they're seeing in the future, so they can, in the long, twisted turn, mind readers got to win. You guys think I'm wrong? Let me know, because I, I will fight you on that. Let's, let's debate this. And also to the ranch dressing debate, we got to know, please, is ranch a dip or is it a dressing? Please comment below. And next up from do, 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 
from Curious. When deciding where to go for lunch with friends, do you voice your true wishes or just go along with whatever anyone else suggests? And if they suggest a place you do not like, do you say so? This is a great question. Mm. And it really depends on the group of people I'm with. I would say if it's my family, I'm going to be 100% honest and say no. I don't want to try chicken liver today, uh, which we've never tried that. Andrew, hashtag dip. Lorene ranches both. Yeah, it is. Andrew, it's dressing too. What, Andrew? Okay, no. Uh, but in general, I try to be honest. I'm like, if, if we're in a mall, you guys go get, I don't know, Taco Bell. I'll go get Chick-fil-A or Chinese food because that's what I like. Taco Bell is not one of my favorite restaurants. It's pretty good. Uh, but yes, so how honest am I? I'm not going to insult anyone, but I will be blunt. Kimberly, you think it's dressing, but I use it as both? Yep, I would use it as both too. Okay, so next up, our next question is going... Wow, we got 27. I'm going to speed this up. Sorry, guys. Okay, so what we got right now is from Musical. What would be the theme song of your life? This is... A, I, I mean, I love it. I think it would be Johnny Cash's I Won't Back Down. Uh, but sometimes I do back down, but... Oh, Sierra, you say in the Midwest, ranch is the main course. Everything else is side dish or dressing. How about this for your viewers? Yeah. When was the first time that you had ranch? I had it at my cousin's house on French fries when I was probably in junior high. So. What kind of messed up friend was that? Hey, no, no. It was, he, they were way ahead of their time. All right. Don't forget. But, like, yeah. like this video. Like and sure share. So, what would be the theme song of your life? Johnny Cash, Won't Back Down. I would... I would go with that 100% of the way. And do do do. All right, as we continue moving forward, our next question, it comes from Peacemaker, and they are asking, which of your family members are you closest to? And if you're close to each one, what do you enjoy about each relationship? Oh, someone's trying to make me create enemies. Uh, Christian, my mother fed it to me in a bottle. <laughs> Ranch, wow. Mari, how do you remember the first time having ranch? Impressive. It is very impressive. Well, it was, that's an easy one, actually. Sorry to interrupt, but um, I had never heard of it before. I thought it was odd that this family was putting ranch on French fries. potatoes. Yeah, so I had it. I was just almost hooked. It's crazy. All right. So, which family member am I closest to? Me. I would go with that. I look at myself in the mirror, and I'm like, man, you wow. are looking good today. Uh, aside from that, I think uh, really my immediate family I'm closest to, and if I'm close to each one, who do you enjoy about each relationship? My mom will listen to me talk about anything for any amount of time, so I know if I ever have a problem, I can talk to her about it. Uh, I enjoy being with dad because he's the one who can say, uh, if this offends anyone, I'm sorry, he's the one who will say, screw it and do it, let's do it. Uh, and Andrew is the one who will always somehow challenge me no, no. and who will challenge me and at the same time push me to be my best and it doesn't annoy me which is a very rare quality so I just enjoy them all because they all make me better so who's y'all's like favorite aspect with your fam familial relationship wow we got 28 okay from just curious they are asking do 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 Two questions. One, when is the last time you wrote a snail mail letter to someone? And two, an email letter to someone. The last time I wrote snail mail would have been like Mother's Day, and then I didn't even mail it. I just could hand it to her. Uh, email, like yesterday, because with college I have to email all kinds of people all the time. So thank you for the question. I like that. Do you guys prefer like handwritten letters or like email? Because I like handwritten letters, but... Some people's writing I can't read, and email is nice. So I don't know. There's cons to, you know, pros and cons to both. From Sunshine, thanks for shining the light. Question, would you rather go swimming in a pool or the ocean? Great question. Pool, pool. absolutely. Oh, pool. yeah. Pool because I don't have to worry about riptides pulling me out and sharks getting me most or of the time. Jellyfish. Or jellyfish. Or viewers that don't like and share. Or swordsfish. Uh, handwritten, Kimberly. I I would agree. Handwritten letters are. I think incredible. definitely depends on the personality. True the person. Yeah. What's our views up to since? We are at eleven. Eleven. Sweet. Don't forget, folks. Tonight we're doing a drawing at the end of a video of but our video. We're also eating because we hit 
15 people last week. We're doing so some spicy stuff. We're doing a spicy combination of cauliflower and mint chip uh, ice cream bleh. with hot sauce. So if we get Why? over 15, you guys can suggest what we're going to eat. Yep. So that's what we're going to do. That's why we push you guys to... Yeah, mm-hmm. to set, to share and get our viewership up yep. so you can see us. All right. Next up, if you could either have coffee again or never have des- if you could either never have coffee again or never have dessert again, which would you choose? I would choose coffee because I hate coffee. Because coffee is just terrible. I'm sorry. You, you don't need coffee for your energy. Um, depending on your personality, though. Well, no. For it me, all depends on the age you're at, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what you're you doing. What, you if you're waking up work- early every morning having to do workouts, I, I get coffee. You know what? Go for it. For me, no. I don't want to depend on a substance for my attitude and my mood. That's why I'm against coffee. But, all right. Next up, what should it be? What makes you forget to eat? Great question. <sighs> Nothing. <laughs> Sleep, Maybe. Uh, sometimes I've, I've often slept through breakfast, so I think sleep is always the best one. Uh, Mari, you don't like coffee either. I'm I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. (laughs) Here's the thing. Coffee taste. I don't have a problem with. If you like coffee for coffee, great. If you like coffee for caffeine, I, I don't know. All right. Next up from Woody, a rather, would you rather be pinched by a crawdad or be nibbled by a leech? Oh, I think I'd go with a leech because I've had a, I've, I've experienced both actually. Uh, Andrew, I don't need coffee to wake up early. I have a homemade alarm clock that gets me up before seven. I I do love that alarm clock. Wow, well congratulations. But I think I would go with a leech because leeches I think are easier to get off. I would rather eat what I'm going to eat tonight than have either one of those things happen. Getting pitched by a crawdad, you hate yes. that much. Yes, the crayfish can get pretty big. Mm-hmm. I agree. It depends what they're pinching. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, next up. <laughs> what? All right. From Budgeter, how do you determine how much to save versus how much to spend? Any tips or solutions that has worked for you? I would say if you can afford it, save at least $100 a month. That is what I like to do. If you can, that means in $100 that can help pay any extra bills that might come up. Uh, it, it was very beneficial when I was saving up for, I did a challenge to myself to see if I could save $1,000 in a year from working at Chick-fil-A. And if you manage your time well and your money correctly, you can easily do that. So my main question would be, think about where you wanna go in life. If you want to stay at your same level, don't, don't worry about saving. But you should always have an emergency fund of at least, I think it's $1,000 in case any and anything unexpected happens. So that would be my big tip and that has saved me big time for when I would go up to help my brother move after they just had a baby and I wanna be there to help. So emergency funds are great. So next up comes from Socks who is saying my husband collects dinosaur models. I told him I would display some of them in our new apartment. How do you think I should go about displaying them? However, it makes your husband feel important because dinosaurs, figurines, things like that really matters to husbands and, uh, well, I think it matters to everyone, but he just wants to know that you care even if you don't care because, you know, that you're not going to care about everything that every that your partner cares about in marriage. So, it's just important that you show respect to it. Give him a little corner in the room that's his and make it look like a diorama of how the dinosaurs died out. That's what I would do. Uh, Andrew, did you know every seconds in Africa, every 60 seconds in Africa, a minute passes? Wow, Andrew, thank you. I, I did not know that. That's incredible. All right. <laughs> Whoop. Sorry, really quick. From our next viewer, they are, wait, ah, wrong one. From Kronk, do you happen to know what fear is, oh gosh, hippopotamonstrosis quipedaliophobia? Yes, I actually do know what this is because I studied it before. It is the fear of long words. 
which I think is hilarious that to say that your fear is of long words, you have to say a long word. It makes me laugh at the irony of it. So thank you, Kronk, for sharing. Next up, from Ferb. Hello, do you have any recommendations on a new, on a fun outdoor summer activity? What's your favorite thing to do during the summer? Great question. I love to do anything with friends, try crazy new food. I remember when I was 12, Sonic had its like summer nights shake special. So we got peanut butter and bacon shakes. And I never would have tried that before, but it was delicious. And one other thing, I wouldn't do it again, but it was a fun experience, was having chocolate-covered crickets when we went to a chocolate store. And I never would eat them again, but I can now brag that I've eaten chocolate-covered crickets. So I would do that. (laughs) All right, really quick break. We're going to go to our philosophy phrase of the day, which is just one of my favorites. Uh, It comes from this guy, Arthur Ashe, who was the first black tennis player to win in 1980. Wimbledon. Wimbledon, Grand Slam, you name it, he did it all. And he had this famous quote that I think a lot of us can get hung up on with, we don't have this, we don't have that, and this is what Arthur Ashe says. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. It doesn't matter where you start, but you have to start at some point. You could be starting 100 miles behind everyone else, but if you never start, you will never pass them. And I think that's important for us to realize when we say, I can't do it. No, you can. You just couldn't do it right now. We have to build ourselves up. So with that, we'll return to more questions. Which? Well, yes, we got so Ooh, good. All right, Isabella, yes, that was the best. The shake wasn't half bad. Yes, peanut butter bacon was weird, but it was good. Anina, I remember over in Germany, you guys had a contest on who could put the most grapes in their mouth. Yes, I remember that. I think, I think Dad won with like 20 something how many great i don't know you could fit a lot of grapes in your mouth and Catherine says great quote yes i love that quote a lot and it actually is what inspired me to start this show and so i hope it keeps you guys here next up we have from not from ferb again from francisco that's fun to say it is fun to say so if someone owns a piece of land do they own it all the way to the center of the earth or just the surface I know they probably own it up to a certain depth if you own the mineral rights because I come from farm town where if you didn't own the mineral rights and people found oil, you do not own that oil, which I found surprising. So make sure when you buy land, you own the mineral rights if you think something is valuable there. But I don't know how the exact depth of how far the mineral rights go. Andrew, depending on the size of the grape, dad can fit a thousand grapes in his mouth. I believe that. Or just three big grapes. That is true, Andrew. Thank you. (laughs) All right, next up. From The Marvelous Max, what was your opinion on the new Black Widow movie, if you've seen it? I, for one, loved it, but not many others I know did. Curious to see what you think. Well, it sounds to me like Life Sensei's dad has a new movie to review. Because I have not seen the new Black Widow movie. I've heard good things. Charlene, you have to go. Have a great night. Thank you for being here. Uh, But as far as the Black Widow movie goes, I haven't seen it. It looks cool because Black Widow is an incredible martial artist. And I love studying anything with close quarters combat. So I think it's good. I will review it when it comes off of uh, Disney Premier Access. So yes. that's the only time. We don't really have movies here in El Paso, I don't think. Not right now. But I think they're still closed. So, But they might be opening up. I don't know. But I will review that if I can. All right. And so next up, we have from Materialistic Take Two. And they are here asking, besides the Bible, what is your top two or three most important objects in your life? Great question. Okay. I should have known uh, that would come back. Well... I mean, they're not objects. They're my parents. I just love them so much that they're who I would prioritize in a fire. Uh, But I would probably say my laptop because that's what allows me to uh, do all of this. And probably either my phone or my iPad because both allow me to do my school, to just find new opportunities, and to pass time however I like. So Definitely something electronic if it can't be my parents because they're not objects. They're living, breathing people. I've learned to make that distinction. Uh, 
Next up from, I don't know who I'm changing the camera. From Scobian, best salad dressing. <laughs> uh, ranch, ranch all the way. Our best salad dressing, I'm not sure, but I would definitely go with ranch all the way because that's the only dressing I like. Next up, from yeah. Lover of Jesus, what is your favorite worship song, favorite hymn, and favorite contemporary one, and share why? Uh, let's see, favorite hymn. Is, is In Christ Alone a hymn, or is that contemporary? I feel like... I feel it like could be a contemporary hymn. Yeah, it's I a, mean... It's a worship song. In, in Christ Alone is one of my favorites, especially the Owl City version that's on YouTube. I love that. Uh, but uh, favorite contemporary one, I guess... Gee, I don't know. There, there's so many. I, contemporary, I wouldn't go with like modern day contemporary. I'm not a fan of those. But you know what? Josh Wilson's Listen is what, probably one of my favorites because it talks about how we talk too much and we say we're listening to God, but we just keep talking and thinking when he could be trying to speak to us. So I love that one. And in Christ alone, I think that one speaks for itself. It's in Christ alone that we're saved and that we can live life and be happy. So that makes me happy and I love it. Mighty Fortress is our God. That is a very good one. Martin Luther wrote that one, I think. Maybe I was it wrong. is well. That's a great. Oh yeah, that, it is that's well with good my soul. In both the mm -hmm. contemporary. Andrew says hymns are good, but what about the female versions, the hers? Oh my god. That's true. In today's woke society, we need to be calling. We need to be mindful of the hers as well as the hymns. Oh my gosh. Uh, and Sarah is saying it is well. The story and words are amazing, and reckless love. Those are very good ones, Sarah. Good choice. Uh, but yeah, I said it too. from Yo Pancreas, what does the pancreas do? Uh, as far as I'm aware, because I'm not a doctor, I am, I believe it is what, wait, no, kidneys are what takes, uh, takes the sugar out of your system and like makes insulin. But pancreas, I think it's actually does nothing. And scientists are curious why we have the pancreas. So, and Sarah, you love in Christ alone. The Owl City version is the best. I completely agree with you no all right next up there's only one go. person to sing in christ alone it's just that one, one i'm surprised you didn't say shine jesus shine oh wait yeah. i didn't right. ask me all right but from real gun emoji i recently bought an at ar-15 with my last stimulus check what are your most recommended ar-15 accessories well i would go with a purse I think that looks very good on a gun. I think uh, I should handle this one, son. I think you should get some nice magazines for it to read. Uh, and uh, a, a good scope, because you need a broad scope of magazines. Uh, but Life Sensei's father knows a bit more. So, what? Okay, what kind of weapon is it again? AR-15. An AR-15. Uh, okay, so an AR-15, you should have... Uh, Night vision, ideally, but you probably don't want that. You just you need a good optic, though. <laughs> so that's, you need a good optic, mm -hmm. and you should get a binary trigger. But don't ask me. So uh, thank you. Any yeah, anything else? But uh, you can get you can pick up decent optics. You know, less than th between one hundred and five hundred dollars. Oh gosh, the cauliflower. Okay, sorry, I'm looking at they placed the the special in front of me. Victoria, the question on favorite dressing was written before the ranch dressing debate. It's both a dressing and a dip. I agree with you, Victoria. Thank you. Okay, next up, we are on our last question of the evening from Mackay. Chicken wings, hot, mild, or fire, bone in, or boneless? Great question. Depends entirely on who is eating them. For me, boneless, mild, with ranch, because it's a dip and a dressing. Uh, I, I would try spicy mild, if that's a thing, like mild spice. But uh, when we get wing, does anyone eat wing stop? I don't know. I like wing stop because you get good deals and good wings, but I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, why did I eat all of this? Maybe it's just me. Does anyone eat at Wingstop? Because it's, it's good, I guess. Sure. Hang on. Dad, you got a favorite? Yeah, definitely. Boneless wings are not wings. Yes, they so, are. Well, not in the real scope of it. But bone-in, it, it's all good. And then um, breaded, 
yeah, I'm with a mild or a sweet. I, I just can't handle heat, which is making the next thing that's going to happen to us very painful. Yes, and actually that's a great transition because that is all the time we have for our questions. We are going to just enjoy this delicious monstrosity. Well, we draw first in case we like throw up? Yeah, we should draw first. No, wait, you guys want us to draw or eat first? Because we could be all spiced out while we're... Uh, doing the drawing and that might be funnier to you. I don't know. Andrew, you don't have Wingstop near Chattanooga? Well, I'm sorry. And Mari says B-dubs Thursday after 9 p.m. half off wings. That sounds good. Mm. And Quinn Meritate, thank you so much for being here. All right. So I think let's do the drawing first. Okay. Right. And remember, if you have just joined us, comment hashtag live or hashtag replay, depending on when you're watching this video. And please make sure that you uh, like and share this video so that way we can keep shining the light and grow our audience to where we can make more happen. Eat first, Kim says. All right, we're going to eat first. Andrew says we should eat first, too. All right. Andrew says you have cold stone. Come on, you lucky duck. All so, right, so uh, the last week, look. Hang on, it's a little hard to see. The color of the mint is getting drowned out by the yellow of the light. And, oh, we're not done, son. Oh, I know, I'm covering the cauliflower in it. So we've got hot Ugh. sauce with chip and mint ice cream, oh which I gosh. find repulsive, and cauliflower, which I find repulsive. Oh, covered in it. All right. I'll liberally pour. I'm not sure if the hot sauce will get counteracted by the by the by the hot sauce. All right. Wait, wait. We got to take a bite of the whole thing at the same time. Yes, all of it. I can't see more. Okay. Oh gosh. What the heck is this? It's somehow cooling and heating my mouth at the same time. Why, Catherine? Why indeed? I told you my sister-in-law comes up with the most genius, the best, and worst food combinations. Now, the next time we have to do this is, if we do 15, another time. <sighs> We'll sing, but if you hit 20, we'll do another thing like this. Mm -hmm. So with that, <laughs> let's get to our drawing. Oh. And this drawing, I believe, which are, what were we do, drawing for again? <laughs> Mint and chocolate do not belong together, period, Bella. I, I, I could see that. So, everyone's name... But I'll tell you this, carrot does not belong in cake either, but I'll try that. Okay. Anyone that hashtag live is entered for a drawing to win our first official life, well, Isaac News t-shirt or hat, depending on which we can get first, but. And the first? The first winner that we have is Judy Horner or Horner Dudes. <laughs> so congratulations, Judy. You will be we'll be contacting you shortly so we can get the right shirt sent out to you. Oh my gosh. And uh, on that note, I'm going to prepare to end us with our closing thoughts. <coughs> <laughs> Cauliflower is foul in the begin first off. It 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 should just be voided from this planet. It's horrible. And hot sauce. Why do people like hot sauce? I don't get hot sauce. I don't understand spice. I just don't understand. <laughs> all right. It. All right. Ice cream is. Oh, we got. Yay, yay. I know her. Yes, you do know uh, Judy Victoria. And Bella, you wouldn't. Oh, I would. I would. All right. But for my closing thoughts today, oh. he took another bite. He, he took another bite. Yes, congrats, Horner dudes. All right. So, what the heck? Sorry, my closing thoughts seem to have vanished. Mom, can you hand me my phone really quick, please? Thank you. I don't know what happened to them. But for my closing thoughts, I write them down so that way I don't... You guys know how it works. All right, so today I am here to ask you this. We said start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. So I'm here to ask, what kind of person are you trying to be? 
Do you want friend? Do you want lots of friends? Do you want a few friends? None? What reputation are you working to build? How are you working to get there? In the end, no one can judge you for what you want to be as long as it doesn't harm those around you. So today, I encourage you all to take this week and dedicate, let's all dedicate ourselves to being, to becoming who we are meant to be. Because it won't always be easy, but in Christ alone and through Christ, all things are possible. So thank you all so much for joining me in this extra long Isaac News for our cauliflower, mint, jalapeno, hot sauce eating. Congratulations, Horner Dudes, for winning that shirt. Please like, comment, and share this video so we can get more out here, have more people in the drawing for shirts. And until then, I will see you all next time. Thank you so much.